Inventory grew, but holy mother of pearl, did that inventory gap from last year widen. Buyers take notice and sellers take cover. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update and talk a little bank pillow talk, if you will, about expected interest rates in the fall. And it isn't pretty. And for the luxury home of the week, we're headed down to the Cape look at a spectacular home with a guest house in Chatham. Hi, I'm Jeff Cho. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Last week, I mentioned how I felt the market was beginning to slow down. Conversations with a couple mortgage lenders and attorneys later, and I can confirm just that. We are not seeing the crazy amount of multiple offer situations, and I feel like some agents, well, they're getting a little desperate and crossing that ethical boundary and not necessarily telling the entire truth on how many offers they have. That is, if they have any, let alone with their guidance. I'm confident that there are some good buying opportunities out there. This summer market is going to be a great market for some buyers. But now, let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 4,012 homes on the market. Now, let's remember that my prediction was not to go over 4,500 units this year. So far, I'm feeling pretty good about that prediction. Inventory continued to trickle up this week. It is up a whopping 45 units from last week. Last week, I mentioned my worry about not having much inventory going into the fall market. A 45-unit weekly build is making me continue to feel that worry. Take a look at this chart and compare this year, which is the blue line, to last year, which is the red line. When comparing the two years, we now have 1,414 units less on the market than we did the same time last year. That is a big number. It is now 236 units less compared to the inventory levels back in 2021, which used to be the historical low point for inventory. So why is this inventory gap happening? It's because we're simply not listing nearly as many homes as we did the same time last year. This week, we listed 1,133 houses. Now, remember that number because I'm going to point out something kind of cool in a moment. The same week last year, we listed 1,796 homes. This means that the amount of new listings year over year was off by nearly 37%. Plus, next week, the data won't be pretty because of the July 4th week. People are holding their listings this week so that way they can go on the market next week after the 4th of July. I actually personally have three listings coming on the market next week. They would have all been ready to go this week, but it made no sense with so many people to go in the way to list your property. Very quick and a really important and tangent, actually. If you're selling your house in the summer, it is imperative that you do not wait until the weekend to allow showings or try to push off showings to that weekend. Agents do this all the time, and it is a huge deal because so many people go on vacation. If you're doing this, then you could be costing yourself thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. And don't get me started on a company chums and how much opportunity these sellers lose because of those. It's just kind of dumb. We had 1,133 houses go under agreement this week. Did you catch that? There were 1,133 houses that came on the market and the exact same amount went under agreement. Yes, I'm a nerd. I admit it. But I thought it was kind of cool. The four-week rolling average is 1,059 units. So we are a little above that pace. Now, this same week, last year, we had 1,338 single-family homes go under agreement. This means that year over year, under agreements were down by 15.3%. The big imbalance, it continues. New listings were down by nearly 37%, while pendings were down by only 15%. Buyer demand continues to outstrip seller supply, and by quite a bit. There were 896 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $841,000 and a median sales price of $655,000. Now, I took a quick peek under the hood to see what the June data is starting to tell us. Looks like June will be another decent month when we take a look at the monthly year-over-year -year data. Be on the lookout for that analysis next week. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market, but the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory fell to 1.73 months compared to last week's 1.76 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong market for sellers. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling the home, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now on to the condo market. We have 2,332 condos on the market as of Monday. Now the choke of an inventory build in the condo market, it just continues. So let's take a quick second and look at the last couple of weeks. We had a plus four units, plus 14 units, and minus six units. 
For all intents and purposes, inventory levels remain flat in the condom market for pretty much the last month. The trend of inventory levels getting worse when compared to last year, well, that one continued. We now have 518 fewer condos on the market today than we did today last year. It's absolute craziness. I would have thought that if we were going to see an inventory build anywhere, it would have been in the condo market. Just hang with me a couple seconds here. Yes, the lower interest rates are keeping people from moving. But for the folks who live in a two-bedroom condo and are about to have their third kid, there's only so long that the interest rates are going to keep those feet planted to that place. Eventually, we'll have to throw up their arms and say, you know what, I need more space. It's time to move to the suburbs, right? There were 509 condos that came on the market this week. The four-week rolling average is 475 units, so we're a little above that number. But we were nearly 29% off the year-over-year -year new listing data when 715 condos came on the market. There were 471 condos that went under agreement this week. The four-week rolling average is 444 units, so we were slightly above that average. But this week last year, there were 543 condos that went under agreement. This means that year-over-year, -year, the level of sales were down by 13.3%. Now, last week, that number was 3%, and the week before, it, it was 10.5%. So just like the single family market, demand is outstripping supply. So inventory was down by 29% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 13.5%. Another week of a really strong imbalance. There were 368 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $688,000 and that median sales price of $548,000. And then that months of inventory, it decreased to two months from last week's 2.05 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? If so, then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And well, subscribing, <laughs> that one doesn't hurt either. I feel like I'm running out of ways to say that interest rates, well, they've just moved sideways, but I'll take sideways. Sideways isn't up. And as I've said, the market doesn't really need any additional competition, which would happen if interest rates were to go down. I said it last week, and I think the week before, and I'm about to talk about how it's expected that interest rates are going to go up in the fall. If you're thinking about buying a new home, then you might want to consider pushing up your buying timeline to lock in today's rates, which could look like a bargain in a couple months from now. Boy, if only I had a dollar for every time someone said they were waiting for interest rates to go down, I'd have a lot of those dollars. And as I've said on many occasions, the big money originally thought interest rates were going to start declining in the fall. I mentioned a video or two ago that I don't think there will be any dips and really think they will be staying within their current range unless there is a major breakout event that makes them either go up or go down. Them going up would mean that inflation is back with a vengeance and down would mean that our economy is in trouble. So I was pretty shocked to find that one of the biggest lending banks in the country are expecting interest rates to go up to the 8% level this fall and are buttoning down the hatches from the expense side to correlate with this type of lending environment. I will say it again, so you don't have to hit that rewind button. Yes, I said 8% interest rate levels. That makes our current interest rates look cheap. But then I stumbled on this article, which made me realize that this could very well be true. Money supply growth falls by depression era levels for second month in April. Now, money supply growth fell again in April, plummeting further into negative territory after turning negative in November of 2022 for the first time in 28 years. I would tell you, I got to this point of the article and was thinking, wow, this has got to me that interest rates are going to go down because it sure does sound like our economy is starting to tank. After all, if the money supply is shrinking, then that means there is less money to spend on things which negatively affects the economy, right? And when you see this graph, it really accents that possibility as this is the money supply percentage year over year change. You're scared, right? Because money supply growth can often be a helpful measure of economic activity and an indicator of coming recessions. But then you see the amount of money supply graph and realize that we still have a ways to go to get back to the quote unquote normal. In spite of the recent drop in total money supply, the trend in money supply remains well above what existed during the 20-year period from 1989 to 2009. To return to this trend, the money supply would have to drop at least another $4 trillion or so, or about 22%. When it comes to inflation and the economy, we still have to pay the bill from the government's COVID binge of irresponsibility. The only way that the Fed can get all of this excess money out of the system, it's by increasing interest rates. 
So the Fed still has some work to do, which means higher interest rates could very well be right around the corner. And that bank could very well be correct. Damn. And now onto the luxury home of the week, which is in Chatham. This house, when you include the guest house, is a six bedroom, four full and four half bath house that spans 7,700 square feet. This is a pretty cool house because the original house was built back in 1820, but it has been recently renovated and has a bit of a contemporary flair. It's a mesh of the best of both worlds, if you will. To start, this home offers commanding views of Oyster Pond, and to take advantage of every view, there are walls of glass that overlook the expansive lawns and gardens, as well as that water view. The main house is a five-bedroom house, while the three-story guest house provides for additional accommodations and overlooks the stunning pool and spa. To top it all off, it has immediate access to the beach and a private association dock, while being just steps to the restaurant shops and galleries of Chatham. This opportunity, it's being marketed with an asking price of $14,800,000. Real quick question. Do you like the luxury home of the week? Is this worth keeping in the weekly videos? Let me know your thoughts. I'm just really curious. But want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? I do the luxury house of the week. Well, it's just for fun. For my specialty and mine love, it's helping the normal guy. Not the gal buying the $15 million waterfront estate, right? And when it comes to helping people sell, well, my goal is to provide the same service that that $15 million estate purchasing person is getting, but for us, non $100,000 plus property tax, tax payer folks, right? Every person's home, well, it's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com, just fill in your name and the best way to reach out to you, and then I'm gonna reach out to you. Whichever way is easiest and works best for you. I love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. I would just love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals, questions, or comments about any of this market data, then throw them in the comments section below. You take the time to watch the video, so well, I'm always gonna take the time to respond to you. Until next time.